Hey, Lesketeers. Uh, welcome to the podcast. It is me, Jenny, and me alone. L- Levi is not here today. And um, I am just so excited that you're here listening. Um, welcome. Uh, I just want to thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this family. Thanks for being a Lesketeer, if you call yourself that. Um, and what we get to be a part of, of, um, of talking with people and talking about Jesus and um, talking about the word and just the things that come up in these uh, conversations that we get to have with each, with my husband and I, with, with guests that we have on, it's just such a joy. And we just, I I just want to thank you for, for journeying with us and being a part of this. And um, also just wanted to put on your radar, um, the incomparable cruise. Uh, We're going to um, the Mediterranean area with Lisa Harper and Cody Carnes and Carrie Job, And this is just going to be such a special time. This is uh, July 13th through 20th, this uh, July. And would love to just invite you to consider coming along, being a part, um, taking the the footsteps of of Paul and just uh, following his missionary journey in, in these areas. And it's just going to be so special. So uh, we're excited. Uh, all the, that information can be found, I don't even know, the Incomparable Cruise, just Google it, it's fine. Um, Also, today, I get to have a sweet conversation uh, with my friend, Onika McClellan. And um, she and her husband, Earl, pastor a beautiful church in Shoreline Shoreline City Church in um, Dallas. And uh, they're just a special couple. And today it's just me and Onika. And the things that we, um, God was just really leading our conversation. And it's really beautiful. She just has a way with uh, being selfless in a moment with someone, uh, speaking life over them, having just the awareness of what God wants to speak into their heart and their life. And um, so we kind of go into that and talk about the the, the practicalness of that and and what does that mean for us? Um, and we can't talk to everyone. Who do we know to talk to and and speak life over? And um, so anyways, I'm excited for you to hear this episode. And um, we also, in episode 85, which I don't even know what season that was in, but we talked with her and her husband, Earl. So if you didn't get to listen to that, that was a really amazing conversation. Um, talking about church planting, um, marriage, workout routines, uh, parenting. Uh, That was a really great conversation too. But this one I'm excited about and uh, can't wait for you to hear. So lean in, get your tea, get your coffee. Um, If you're driving, both hands on the wheel, uh, have fun, love you and lean into this message. Onika mm-hmm. McClellan, welcome to Hey, It's the Lescos. Hi. Welcome back, I should say, because you and yes. your husband were with us. Um, gosh, when was that? That was like a few, couple years couple ago. Years we ago. did a double date. Yes. It was a double date. Yes. 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 Yep. Um, and mm-hmm. now it's just, it's me and you. And thank just you. Just the girls. S- just the girl time. Um, but mm-hmm. thank you so much for joining me today. Oh my gosh, you're one of my favorite people. So I could not wait. Oh I could not gosh. absolutely wait to hang. I love that we can hang <laughs> and it feels like we're in the room together, even though we're not in the room together, but it feels like we, yes, we are. Yes, I love mm-hmm. that. I'm so grateful. Um, I was thinking back to when our paths first crossed and I think it was, um, and I could be wrong, but I think you had okay. Levi out to preach at your church. Yes, yes. And I remember the very first time that I ever like heard of you two, you and Earl, you you sent our you sent us like all these gifts because Levi was speaking and we weren't yeah. able to go with him, but you sent all of our kids Doc Martins. Yes. And you sent me this amazing, um, I think it's how you say it, Anine, Anine Bing. Anine Bing, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Hoodie or sweatshirt. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, who is this woman who knew exactly the sizes of yeah. all of our kids, got the the size of docks that they all wore and like we have multiple pictures of them wearing these beautiful little it. docks that you gave them and I hadn't even met you yet but I was like I just I love this family and so I don't think I even got to meet you till a couple years later 
That sounds right. Yep. But yes. um, but you have just been a voice in my life, a, a mm. person in my life that God has just surprised me with just the sweetness of. Love you. And I'm so grateful for you. Um, I specifically, I just think back to um, I think it was 2021, and I went, um, I did a intensive um yes. mm-hmm. Where I I went away from my family, like I, I, I turned yeah, I in my I turned in my phone, I turned in my yes. my computer, like I turned in any uh, communication with my family, which I've never done that before. And I remember on the on the way there, I realized like, oh, I should ask some women in my life to pray for me. <laughs> like I had yes, I had yes, a thong. Like, Hello, <laughs> I had I probably literally be covered while I'm like yes. <laughs> Exactly. Hello, yeah. bless my heart. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I literally was like, okay, I, 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 I should do this. I need to do this. I only yeah. have like a few more hours left with my phone, so I should just like reach out to some women in my life. And so you were on the top of my list. You and and Shelly and Holly and a yeah, few man. other girls. Yeah, and um, mm-hmm. and you were just like, it was like your phone was right there, and you were like ready because I texted you just like, hey. Um, I'm going into this thing. Would you just, would you just pray for me? And you, almost, I feel like you immediately responded with this paragraph of of beauty and and words of life and and encouragement. And you're talking about um, the scaffolding, scaffolding and yeah. mm-hmm. and how God wants to go deep and He wants to go big and He's going to first go for the scaffolding in your in your life. And I and you. In, and you sent me this song that forever changed me. It's called Everything is Changing Now mm-hmm. and um, by B- Belonging Co. Yeah. And I wasn't able to have, like, I didn't even think to have, like, um, an iPod. I don't even know if I would right. be able to have right. one or, like, a, a Walkman with a, a tape cassette or whatever. Right, like, I, so right. I had no Listen. music. And it, that was mm. actually part of the beauty, like, having nothing but just quiet right. just me stripped. and God. Yeah. But... Um, mm-hmm. But that was that was one of the songs. I think there were two songs, that one and then another one, which I, I'm not thinking of right now. But that was just a playlist in my heart because I mm. just I'd listened to it the most I can before. Um, mm-hmm. And then that was like a playlist for me. Everything is changing now. Um, when you walk into the room, like it was literally yes. so beautiful. Yeah. And anyways, I just want to tell you thank you. And I want to tell those listening that you are just a gem of a human and you are special to me and your encouragement goes so far. And, Mm -hmm. and I think, and before we got on, you were just saying something so encouraging. And I was just like, what, what it is, is it just shows your heart. Cause you were just saying like, well, it just comes out. And I'm like, well, that's because your heart is there to, to bless Mm -hmm. and to speak life and love and care and encouragement. And so I am a lucky recipient of, Mm -hmm. Um, of just the beautiful things that God does in your heart. Um, so I'm just thankful. I'm just so excited to spend time with you. From day one, you know how we are as girls. Like, you say something that's not me, it's my turn. I couldn't wait. It's my turn. Jack me in. Um, but I'm just going to tell you a couple things. And girls, you, any girls who are listening to us, you get it. Guys, I'm sorry. We're going to get into the juicy stuff soon. Yes, yes. But I just want to say one of the many things that I love about you is how comfortable you are in your own skin. Hmm. We live in a world where so many of us are not comfortable in our own skin. And every space I've ever walked in with you, you bring this peace. You bring this calmness. You bring this there you are. There'll be thousands of people and you just lock into whoever's in front of you and they're literally the only person in the room, even if you have a million things to do or on your mind or places to go, you just zone right into the person. That's how it feels at your church. That's Mm -hmm. how it feels when you're across the table at lunch or dinner. That's how it feels in an arena with thousands of people. You just make everyone feel like they're the only one. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful for your friendship. You're just like a trusted, safe person. I know that if I was in any situation that I could call you, that you would tell me the truth, but that you would love me through and give me deep hope. And I just appreciate you Mm -hmm. and just so grateful for your consistency. When I think about you, I think of consistency and unwavering, and I just adore you. I would do anything for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nico. I would. Thank I you. you. I love you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, yes, girl. I, I wanted to kind of like 
because I feel like we could talk for hours about everything and it would just be yeah. wonderful. And I would be here. I actually would be here for it. But um, for the sake of <laughs> yeah, um, time, time yeah. and our lives and our, mm-hmm. our spouses and everything, everything. like, you know. Um, so mm-hmm. I was I was wanting to kind of dig into um, this because you um, you do this well. You um, you are pastor, leader, um, creative, um, your wife, mother, friend, uh, just like what you carry is, is a lot and it's powerful mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. But one thing that even, um, as I was thinking about this conversation and even just who you are to me, kind of wanted to dig in a little bit about, um, what it looks like and how you have come to the place where you are just ready. Like you're just ready to pray for someone. You're ready to um, Mm -hmm. speak encouragement and life over someone. And I feel like that's what God calls us all to. And I think some of us are more gifted and more ready than others. And I feel like you're that person where it just comes out because that's where your heart Mm -hmm. is. But what, what has that journey looked like for you? Because was that something that, I mean, I think that's part of who you are, but is that something that you learned like from your parents or being in church or like what, how did that kind of, I don't know, looking back, maybe seeing like the seed of that in your life. I think I've got just hardwired me this way where he's given me an appreciation for his kids. Um, And so I can't help when I see someone to think something good about them. Mm. But I think he just gives me this lens to see people and then to say what I see. And so that's how I approach any interaction. If I'm at a restaurant, if I'm at an airport, if I'm at home with my kids. The other day, my daughter was having a meltdown (laughs) and she's eight, but she's going through this stage where sometimes she gives three or four. And I'm like, but wait, we're eight. Um, (laughs) That's real. this This morning, real time she was having a meltdown and I felt like in that moment and it wasn't a justified meltdown it was just a meltdown but I felt like in that moment that I was just supposed to remind her how beautiful she is and just hug her tight and so I feel like when God when we say God help me to see in this moment and help me to see what you see it helps you to respond how he would respond and not that I always nail it in my parenting moments but this morning I felt like he said hug her tight Mm -hmm. and so I just hugged her so tight and told her how much I loved her and how beautiful she was. And it chilled her out. And so I don't just do that at an airport or a restaurant, but I also try to do it at home. Yeah. But I feel like he's just hardwired me that way to truly see people because I just love people. And no matter their season, no matter what they're walking through, I just have a heart for people, all wow. people. And so I think that's, it's like the overflow of my heart. But even if you're not wired that way, I feel like God can give you eyes to see when you just ask him, like, help me to see my spouse, help me to see my child, help me to see this teacher that I'm about to walk into this parent conference with, you know, help me to see my coworker, help me to see my crazy neighbor. (laughs) I feel like he gives you the eyes to see when you ask. And then you also put yourself in that person's shoes. Hmm. Wow. So that's so good because it really is just being aware that God wants, yes. God wants to give good gifts to his kids, but he yes. also yeah. wants us to be a part of that and to exactly. be able to, exactly. to, to give what he's so freely given us. Like I just think exactly. of the verse that says freely we've been given. So we yep. freely give. And I think that that is, that's so beautiful. So what, what did, what was your upbringing? Like what, yeah. um, yeah. My story. Yeah. yeah, what, like, yeah, I want to know how yeah. what that looked like for you growing up and and experiencing yep. that maybe at a young age. Yes, yes. So I grew up an only child. Wow. So I have zero siblings, so just me, and I grew up with a single mom. So it was just me and my mom, like partners wow. in crime, just the two of us. Wow. And she was a hard worker. Like she just was a boss woman, crushed it. Was a career woman, but in the midst of her just like going hard in the paint, she always made sure I had everything that I needed. She saw me really well. So I, it also came from her. She saw me really well and she taught me to see people. Any place we went, she was always noticing people. She was always looking for needs and fulfilling people's needs. And so she laid the foundation for me. My dad lived in a different state. I didn't see him that often at all. I saw him in summers, mm. but spent the summers with him with his 
his sisters. So not like super close. So I wasn't like a daddy's girl. I was a mama's girl. Yeah. But I think because she felt that gap, she felt the need to almost be double. And I never felt a lack. I never, I never felt unseen. And so she just was a hard worker, provided a great life for me, taught me to love well, taught me to be the first to say, you can borrow my sweater. You can borrow my shoes. As a little girl, we were, would go Christmas shopping for kids in need and we would provide Christmas for other families. And so that's the type of life I was surrounded by, just like generous generosity. If you love something, not being afraid to like give it away, but in a balance way, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was <laughs> the foundation she laid. And all throughout school, um, I just was voted nicest smile because <laughs> I just have always, I don't know, it's just how God made me, yes. I guess. It's, but, yes. Um, oh my but gosh. grew up an only child. Now that I'm older, I, f- I do wish I had siblings. Like I do wish I had siblings because now it's just me. Yeah. And I wish I had a brother or sister that could say, hey, can you help me with such and such? But now it's just me and Earl's been, you know, grandfathered in. But yeah, that was my upbringing. <laughs> <Grandfathered> <laughs> in. It really that. has. But that was my upbringing, a kick butt mom who worked super hard, who provided a killer life for me. Shout out single moms yeah. because it is no joke. It's no joke doing it with a spouse, let alone doing it by yourself. But I'm just grateful that she did didn't quit. I'm grateful that she didn't settle. I'm grateful that she fought to put me in great schools and surround me with like really healthy, life-giving people. Mm. It wasn't until college though, that I gave my life to the Lord. I was always God fearing. Like I always, I always believed in God. I, and I always like, she would read the Bible stories to me growing up, but I didn't like surrender and give my life fully over to Jesus until I was in college. I was just a typical college kid. Like, I don't want to say typical, but I was (laughs) maybe not typical, but I, I partied. I didn't know my value. I didn't know my worth. I didn't know my body was a temple. I didn't know God had a plan for me. I didn't know that I had an inheritance. I didn't know I was God's daughter. I just was just out there. And I had a coworker at a clothing store who would always invite me to church. She would always say, you should come to church with me. She was super fun, full of life, not judgmental, just like she always saw me and always locked eyes with me, but would drop it when I would say, I would always say I would go, but then I would always cancel with her. Mm. But she didn't treat me differently. Mm. We'd go out to coffee, go out to dinner all the time. And I just saw her life. And I saw that she had something that I didn't have. And she just was not needing to go from guy to guy to guy. She wasn't like finding her identity and how many parties she went to. She was just content. She reminded me of you. She was just like very like even killed, Mm. super loving, super fun, super kind, but wasn't trying to compete with other people. And I saw that in her and it drew me to her and it made me fascinated by her. So finally I said yes to coming to church with her. I was 18 or 19. I walked into this church. There was a ton of young people that looked just like me, just like her. And I thought, I didn't know that you could be fun and fresh and fully surrender to God, like fully. And they were worshiping. They were like lifting their hands to Jesus, but they were like normal. (laughs) I think I thought you were going to be normal, but these are very normal. And at the end of the sermon, the pastor said, if anyone here would love to give their heart to Jesus, today's the day. And literally my hand went, it just shot up, like just like automatic. Automatic, automatic. And I had one of those holy encounters where that moment, everything changed for me. Like, just like the song, like everything changed. Mm. He walked into the room of my heart. I started crying and I knew that I knew that I knew that I'd accepted him into my heart. And it was one of those, like, I didn't have a season of trying to live for the Lord, like going back and forth. It was boom. I stopped partying. I broke up with my boyfriend, um, partly because I had the example of my friend. And then also her older sister mentored me and just talked to me about, this is how you read your Bible. Um, This is what it looks like to be a woman of God. And, but not in a weird, creepy, culty way in like a normal, fresh, fun way. And they taught me that like, God has a plan and purpose for my life, that I didn't need to settle, that my value and worth didn't come from my boyfriend. It came from the cross. And they just grabbed me by the hand and walked it out with me. They didn't make it weird or creepy or spooky or judgmental. And that pursuit, as they pursued me, as I pursued God, I the the things of the world fell off of my life. And it was one of those, it was probably one of, it was the greatest decision I've ever made, yeah. like giving my life fully to God. And then fast forward a couple of years later, I met my husband 
Earl, we met in college because I was a transfer student and he would have not had anything to do with me had he met me three years prior <laughs> because that was a hot mess. And, but God knew, like yes. God knew. And he brought this crazy girl who used to go to the club and, you know, cause I love a good time. I still love a good time. Yes, you do. But um, <laughs> I just was a wild girl. Um, but to this guy who just gave his life to the Lord when he was seven, you know, Earl's just like a good kid. And God brought me into his life and we have not looked back ever since. And when I told him my story, and we may have shared this with you before, but when I told him my story of how crazy my past was, when we started dating, he said to me, the next day he brought me a white rose and said I was the purest girl he had ever met. And oh um, God just like, wow, God just, yeah, it was just, it was just one of those moments where it, God was, he was echoing the father's heart for my story. And said, you're the purest girl I know. Oh, and gosh. a couple years later, we got married. And here we are, 26 years later. 26, 26 years. Like, like a whole adult human. Like 26 <laughs> is like a whole person. Like, like an like adult grown- man. Because isn't it like men like finish puberty like yes. when they're like 24, 25 or 26. Their whole brain is like <laughs> frontal lobe is all formed yes. and like grown. Like I'm like a formed grown in my marriage. It's crazy. I don't even know how. It wow. feels like we were just, he was, you know, I met Earl when he was like nine, 18 or 19. Wow. And yeah. And now we have an 18 year old son going on 19. How? I do not know. Oh my gosh. That is yeah. so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We have all the seasons. I have the eight-year-old little girl. So I have like the play dates, the monogram backpack, all the things, the ballet <laughs> lessons. Then I have the middle son who's 13, who can't get enough of all the video, crazy yes. video games. Yes. And then I have a son who's a freshman in college. So I'm just, here we are. We're out here. Wow. All We're the things. All the, all the seasons. Things. So yeah. Gosh, okay. Mm-hmm. All the seasons. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Okay. So you... um. So that's like my a little snapshot of my story. Yes, I love that. And mm-hmm. so you yeah. grew up um, with your mom. California. In, in California. California. What part of California? Mm-hmm. San Francisco. I was born in San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was born in San Francisco. I was born in Monterey. So like just a oh, little bit. Oh, I know bit. exactly where that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're both Cali girls. See? We are. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, and what yep, year yep. were you born? Yeah. I was born in 1972. 72. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Wow. Okay. So you grew up with your mom and yep. did she, she read you the Bible, you said, but did she, yes. did she take you to church or was it more yes, like, we, like, what was we that went to like? Church. We, yes, we went to church. So I would go to Sunday school, but I, it was more religion and yeah. just out of religion, not out of relationship. Yeah. She was doing the best that she knew, you know, knew how to do, but I never had a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. I just went because it was like the right thing to do. But I did not have that relationship. I never learned about a relationship until I went to college. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I never, yeah, I did not. I didn't know there was a different way you could date. I didn't know that. Wow. I didn't know. I didn't know about being valued by a man, like in a relationship. I, I never heard of that before. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gosh. It was okay. all like. Oh, Mind yeah. blown. Okay. Very much. So you much. learned, you learned this, um generosity of of love and life from your mom. Yeah. Do you yes. remember yes. like when you were when you were younger? I I, I feel like sometimes like I look back yeah. and I remember like faces of people or like yeah. how people talked to me or whatever, like as a little kid. Mm-hmm. Like, do mm-hmm. you remember anyone, whether it was at church or or whether yeah. it was family or anything, who yeah. also was kind of that like sweet voice of like encouragement or yes. like, do you remember, yeah, who do you remember yeah, that? I do. I do. Well, it was my uncle, Fred, he's now in heaven and oh, he was amazing. He was the, like the man that I knew someone like that is who I would end up marrying. Wow. And it was the way he loved my aunt, the way he honored her, the father that he was, the uncle that he was to me. He was, he loved God played basketball, just like Earl, super fun, full of life, just like an amazing man of God. And his example marked me so that when it was time to, you know, decide if I was going to marry Earl or not, I chose Earl a lot because he reminded me of my uncle Fred, but he's single-handedly, my mom and my uncle Fred marked me for my entire life. He was just so humble, so generous, so fun, just like strong, full of life, but that's who marked me. He actually gave me away in my wedding. Oh like that's how gosh. close we were that he gave me away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. 
completely marked me. Yes. Oh, that's for beautiful. sure. So generous, so kind, so always had, like making sure. Yeah. So you had all throughout like your childhood, you yes. had, you had a, a mom who yeah. loved you and like kind of like showed you like this is yes. life. You had an uncle. So you had like yes. such a sweet foundation of like what this looked like. So then I, exactly. it, it's almost like once you were in college and then saw it in someone else that wasn't exactly. your mom and wasn't your uncle, that it exactly. like, that it clicked. Cause you know, that the whole, your whole childhood, God was, God was Persuading. there and he was exactly. pursuing you and he was there, mm-hmm. but, but it just clicked into place when yeah. you were that age, which is just, exactly that's so beautiful. I know. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because to me, I chose the college that I went to because I always loved Southern California because I'd spend my summers there. And so God used a place that I would spend my summers to be the place that I wanted to go to college. But he knew all along that that's where salvation would meet me. Oh my He knew gosh. all along. Yeah, he knew all along. He used like, even though my, my mom was a single mom, I'd visit my dad in the summers. But when I was with my dad, I wasn't really with my dad. I was with my, his sisters. Mm. But even that, like God used it to make me fall in love with Southern California and say, when I go to college, I'm going to go to college in Southern California. And he was like knitting my whole story together. Wow. And what college yeah. did you go to? Cal State Long Beach. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In Long Beach, California. Okay. That's yep. so beautiful. Wow. And there was a little college ministry, you know, shout out to all the college ministries because it was that college ministry that had mentored the girl who became my coworker. Gosh. That's how she fell in love with Jesus through that college ministry. And then she, you know, loved me through friendship. And then that friendship brought me to that church that supported that college ministry. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's, that's so beautiful. And I love just the picture of how God can bring different people in different seasons of life for a purpose and to do the work that he wants to do in you, which just is so mind blowing. Cause it's like, God, you're doing this in everyone's life, but you make it feel like it's just me and the, the amount of care and love and, and, um, detail over just my life. Like you care about me. Exactly. 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 I was, um, on the way I'm here to meet with you. I was thinking about that scripture that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm. And I just did like a tiny dig on it. And it made me think of like how you sample things and you taste them to experience them. And I feel like God is saying like, taste and see, like I am good. I have been the thread throughout your entire life, the good times and the bad times. I'm still good. Even in the midst of the mess, just taste and see, like, see my goodness, see my kindness, see that I was there all along through my uncle, through my mom, you know, through Jory. Her name was Jory. She um, Mm. still is in college ministry to this day. Um, He brought me, you know, across her path for a reason. And I wasn't even looking for God. You know, I was just like looking for cute boys and parties and he interrupted, you know, the crazy path that I was on. But I just feel like he keeps saying over and over again. And even to us today, like taste and see the Lord is good, but you have to taste to see you, you do know. you do mm-hmm. and experience mm-hmm. it for yourself because no one exactly. else no one else can taste something Ex- for you that say it and that you, part oh mm-hmm. that's beautiful okay yeah. so you said so yeah. your friend's name's jory she still yes. works in still, college her ministry her yes yes to this day isn't that wild and they're one of those college ministries that like they live on people's support so they have like people that support them so it's so cool because now all these years like once i got married to earl and we had like our own budget like we now support their college ministry the college ministry that found me and so she's still pursuing god's sons and daughters Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. Yeah. All these years later. Praise God. It's wild. That's so, so wild. I know. I know. And who would have thought that a coworker at a clothing store, she could have thought, oh, that only the pastor can be a light or I have to have like a degree in biblical studies and, Come on. you know, have yeah, to be able to like be a light. But she just was my friend. And through her friendship and her example and the invitation, that's why like my life was forever changed. Yeah. From just a regular girl. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah. and that willingness to um to be in your life and to let you into yeah. her life. And exactly. I just and I see just that thread of like 
um, of loving people, because I think that that's really what God calls us to do. Like what we, yes. you saying earlier, just, just to love the people that he loves. And yes. sometimes it comes in, in ways that maybe we don't, we wouldn't exactly. normally look for. So like to, yep. to be yep. in a workplace, to be in a school, to be, yes. um, in a grocery store, wherever it, right, right, it right. might be, where God might use you to speak life over someone, exactly. to be in someone's life. Um, yep. And that friendship that can just change everything. Exactly. And that's just so, exactly. that's so beautiful. I love that so much. Okay. So I want to take a quick little pause and, um, and talk about college ministry. And okay. yes. Onika, you and I, um, had the privilege of getting to be there at Passion 2024 this year. Um, My goodness. And witness our husbands preach uh, beautiful messages in yes. with 55,000 college students. Um, life-changing, first of all. Life-changing, like, for I, sure. In awe of the fact <laughs> that we were invited into this it, to have space. a seat to just to yes. witness yes. what God was doing yes. in this space. And I, there's this one point where we're sitting next to each other. Cause I think throughout, like throughout all the time, like we're in different seats and I think you, yes. your husband yeah. speak, spoke right before um, or no, after, after, after. my husband. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Um, but there was this one part in worship where you and I are sitting next to each other. And as you were talking about college, I was just like, oh my gosh, like remembering this moment where um, Christian Stanfield is leading with the Passion Band and he yeah. just goes into Agnes Day, um, yeah. Alleluia, for the Lord God yeah. Almighty reigns, and it mm -hmm. just goes off. And afterward, we found out that it was a 19 minute waiting on the Lord moment where the Holy Spirit just like blew so. through this this yeah. huge arena. arena. And I just have this picture of me being next to you. And th this, this moment just is before us and then goes, and then we go into the, the message. And I just look over at you with like no words. Like we just look at each other, like what just happened. happened? <laughs> and I just want to know from your perspective, like what was going on in your heart, in your soul, yeah. in your mind, like in this moment, because it was just one of those moments where you just, it was just like, okay, God, you're, you are, your, your presence is here and felt by yeah. 55,000 people <laughs> at one moment. I, I, have, I have never experienced anything like that. I can honestly say in my entire life, yeah. it felt like an open heaven and even though there are 55,000 students in that arena, it felt like this big wow wonder, the awe of God, but it also felt like there were 50 people squashed into this like holy, mm. beautiful chapel at the same time. So that juxtaposition of this like chapel, holy, just you and God moment, but then the awe and wonder of almost, almost 60,000 students singing at the top of their lungs, crying out to God. And then we would just wait on the Lord. And it was not like produced. That was not like a set list of like, okay, we're going to pause. They're going to sing this chorus. Yes. So it was just like, you could tell every moment was God breathed and the Holy Spirit was leading and guiding, but it felt like something that's going to bring solution to the earth. Mm. It felt like we were in that arena and within the lives of all of those students around us, that God was planting solution in their hearts for the things that are facing our world. And I left so full of hope, yes. so full of faith. I talked about it in my little Instagram post about, it's hard to recap like that experience. I know, right? My, yeah. My, my post feels like whatever <laughs> compared to like what really happened. But I was trying to articulate our world is filled with so much heaviness and just all the crazy things that we hear about all the time. But in that arena, I felt like God said, look around. Like, this is the hope of the world. This is the future. I'm bringing solution. I'm planning dreams that are going to answer problems for our future, for our now. And the faith that was in that room and the hunger, um, because so many people have said, oh, this generation is not hungry for the things of God. They've mm -hmm. been so blessed and they have all their needs met and they don't know how to hunger. They were calling upon the Lord, yes. crying out to God. And there was this desperation. And I felt like God 
felt that like and all the angels were like, oh, we go into the bins. We showing up. We showing up. Bring all the best yes. angels. Like we're about to meet and we're about to like break some chains. Mm. And it was neat too because I love that environment. Because there were people who were very church, obviously, who like grew up in church and just have this like tender, pure heart, like God do more. But there were also people that were in their question season. But you could tell that even in their question season, that walls were coming down and that they were opening up their hearts and saying, God invade the space of my life. And I left like changed and wrecked in the best way. Same. I, yeah, like my phone is filled with all these videos that I was just taking because I wanted to remember and go back to the moments. Yes. But yeah, it was life. It was like core memory. Core for sure. memory. Core memory. Totally, mm-hmm. totally. Core memory. And I think core the moment when um, when Christian just kind of mm. backed up a little bit and then yes. the, the, the room just kept yes. going. And they kept singing. They kept singing. And um, Christian mm-hmm. came in and 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 spoke from read from Revelation and with the angels singing holy holy and earlier that, yes. Louis yes. Louis had talked about um, holy 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 like I just felt like yes. it was like you said it, there was such a heavenly um, beauty and presence and focus and reverence and reverence. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, we'll never be the same. And I'm just so grateful yeah. that you and I we literally like got to experience that together. Me too. And we'll Me never too. be the same, but we have that. No. We have like a little link in that yes, together exactly, that, wow, exactly. we actually got to be sitting together. Like be in the room, in the room, in the room, like in the room. <laughs> what the world, what in the Seriously. world. Seriously. Yeah. I, it was very much like, is this really happening? Like it was very much like pinch me. Yeah. This is, I can't believe I'm experiencing this moment with a whole generation, like hearts pointed towards God. Are you kidding me yeah. right now? Well, yeah, and I, it was powerful. like you said, it was a room of 55,000 students, but it's also felt so intimate. Like I felt like pers- Very. personally, like I was, I was amazed and inspired to see yep. this room, like the Holy Spirit pour out on this, mm-hmm. this arena. Yes. But then personally, like I felt like God was doing, shifting something in my Same. own soul where Same. like there was this moment of just waiting on the Lord but just crying out. And I feel like I had never like cried out in song in like with my voice yep. like that before. And mm-hmm. it was almost like a, cause a word that I feel like God's given me this year is, is listen. And I want to listen Beautiful. for his voice and I want to listen to people and I want to listen mm-hmm. for what the Holy Spirit's leading me to do. But yeah. that's also, I feel like in that moment I was feeling like, listening to what God's put into me, like in the voice Beautiful. that God's given me. And I think that there's just those moments where Holy the Holy Spirit is poured out in a special way where yeah. he's clearly moving in yes. a group, a very large exactly. group. Exactly. But he's exactly. also very exactly. clearly moving. In, in individual. Individually and so exactly. intimately. And I think that that is what's so beautiful when, when you... Um, I guess when we, as God's people, yeah, listen to the Holy Spirit and listen yeah. to what God's calling us to do in that little moment with someone. And I think exactly. this is just so, that, so special where you, um, he speaks, but where you have that example, you lead in this example of taking a moment with someone mm-hmm. to text them, to um, speak um, life over them. And you, you mentioned this earlier of just God has given you such a heart for people to speak what he wants to speak to them. And what does this look like for you? Like, cause I know time is a constraint for us. Time time is like annoying, Uh but also beautiful. And also like, it's just what we live in time right now. And in Mm -hmm. heaven, in heaven, we won't, we won't have time. We'll get to exactly. like you and I in this conversation in heaven, we would be able to just spend hours and hours and hours and hours and 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 no time. Like, um, but for you, like taking a moment with someone, like you have so much on your plate. You have um, a beautiful ministry. Your church is Shoreline Church, Shoreline City mm-hmm. Church. Mm-hmm. And um, you and your husband leave, lead so uh, beautifully and with such, like mm-hmm. you guys are so comfortable in your skin. And I love getting to, like we got to come and 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 be a part of what God's so doing in your church. Beautiful. And you just lead with such a relaxed confidence mm-hmm. and such a strength. 
So you have time, like you, I mean, you have a time constraint, like you're doing things, you have a meeting, but how is it for you to take a moment and to, to walk in what God's called you to speak over someone or encourage someone or pray with someone? Like, what does that tension look like for you to take a moment? Yes. And to speak life. Yes. I think it comes with practice, but the more you do it, the more natural and normal it becomes to listen to that still small voice. Mm. Sometimes you can be scrolling on Instagram and you can read a post from a friend that just jumps out at you as like a little more in their feels than normal. And so when I see that, when it like, sometimes you see it for a reason, like sometimes you don't notice it because you're just like popping through, but sometimes God kind of arrests your eyes for a reason. And so when that happens, when I feel that like prompt, I'll send them a little quick voice memo or I send them a DM that says thinking about you, praying for you. Mm. I feel like people give us little, you know, subliminal prompts where you're like, huh, that doesn't sound like their tone. I'm just going to send them a voice memo to check on them. Or you'll be getting ready for your day and someone will come on your mind that you haven't seen in a long time. That's another little prompt that just says when you get a chance, shoot them a little voice memo, send a scripture that's on your heart to tell them that you're thinking about them, praying for them. Or if you don't have the capacity, asking someone who knows them, hey, how so-and-so have you had coffee with them lately they keep coming up on Mm. my mind and normally what I've found when you get those little prompts it usually means like that person is going through something or needs something and so I try to listen and live a life of like God what are you saying in this moment how can I bring strength to this person in the moment and then he starts to give you eyes to see where it just you start to walk it out and so I try to listen and say God what are you saying is there anything I need to say? Is there a, sometimes it's simple because you can't have coffee with everyone. Right. You can't have a phone date or a FaceTime with everyone. So sometimes it's a quick voice memo. Sometimes it's shooting someone a text or a fun little selfie saying, thinking about you, praying for you. Hmm. But people want to feel seen because we live in a world where so many feel unseen. And so when God gives you that little prompt, I think it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah saying, check on my son, check on my daughter. And it could even be with someone that you don't know. You could be at a restaurant and you could practice this when your waitress or waiter or server just seems kind of grumpy pants. And (laughs) you're like, man, is it just me? They're like not feeling our table right now. Like I feel like I'm an inconvenience to this person. And so that happens to all of us. But just like a little prompt that you can do is just say, um, hey, thank you for looking out for our table. Before we get ready to like wrap things up, is there anything that I can be praying for you about? Wow. Just something that simple. And sometimes you'll be shocked at what someone will say where they will just give you the tea and say, I broke up with my girlfriend. And you're like, ah, that's why you've been so distant, you know, or you find out that they're short staffed that day and they're just like fighting for their life. Yeah. And so just like stepping back and putting yourself in someone's shoes, following the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and then just checking on people. I feel like that could go so far because most times when people are salty, it's not even about us. Like normally it's some other battle that they're fighting or that they're facing that we just end up on the other side of what they're walking through. Come on. But if we all were a little more like leaned in and listened to those little like nudges and prompts it goes such a long way and it doesn't like solve every problem and like make life perfect, but it does just one person seeing one person makes a difference. You don't have to like see everyone. If you're in a busy lobby, you can't, there's no way you can see every single person, but it's like, God, show me who I'm supposed to go talk to and go talk to that one person. Show me who I'm supposed to text today. Um, and text that one person. Like you obviously don't need to text everyone, but when you feel that prompt, he shows you yeah. like he like puts people in front of us all the time who he's like, love on my son, love on my daughter. That's so true. That's so beautiful mm-hmm. because it is over. It can be overwhelming to think yeah, like for sure. I have so many people on my phone. I could text anybody right, right. now. Like exactly. I, could, exactly. I could call anybody. Yeah. I let's yeah, yeah, yeah. this church is full of people who need exactly. me and, um, right, and right, that can right. be overwhelming, yeah. but it's like you can't, exactly. you can't meet with everyone. You can't no. text everyone, but you can no. do what God's calling you to do in exactly. the moment. That part. And that that's part. so good. And I, and I also hear you saying that there's also a, a, a role of being inoffendable because it that. seems like it. You what you're saying is that there are moments where you could take something that someone posts right. or someone says exactly. or someone does yes. as an yeah. offense towards you. 
But right, instead, right, right. and I love how you said letting God arrest your eyes, like yes. your eyes to see the way he sees, to see someone the way yes. he sees them, not the way exactly. your flesh sees them and how exactly. they totally exactly. didn't give you the right meal or they said right, something right, rude right. to you. But like, exactly. but to say like, God, this, something's not right here. How, exactly. help me see, help me be sensitive Yes. to what you're doing in this person's life. And it seems so insignificant because it's just this one thing, but it actually is so significant exactly. to you. And exactly. I think that is, that's the game changer is being sensitive to what God is saying, Onika, exactly. you're, yes, you're in this part. moment, you're in yes. this restaurant, you're in this exactly. this minute for a, for a purpose. That. And that is literally like in a nutshell, how I live my life. I try not to think about everything that I have in a row. It, I just, it's like, cause the math doesn't math. No. Like I, I just, I, I don't, I can't. So I just stay where I'm at. Does that make sense? Yes. Just like what you said, like where I'm at. So like right now we're together. And so that's all that I'm thinking about yeah. is this conversation and the people that get to be a part of this conversation. That's such an honor yeah. to get to like visit with whoever's listening right now. So this is like where my heart's at. Wow. Wow. And then I'll have my next moment. And then I'm in that moment. Yeah. And I think that is like a key because I think when we count it all and we start adding up everything, that's just exhausting. Absolutely. And then you're worn out before you even move on yes. to the next moment in your Girl, life. preach and, it. Yeah. 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 So exactly what you just said, wow. like being in the moment with whoever you're in that moment with and not trying to tally and add up what you have next. Wow. Because then you sell yourself short. And the person that you're with, you like sell them short. You miss out. Yeah, you miss you out know. on that mm -hmm. moment. You miss out on on getting to speak into that situation, into that exactly. person's life. Into, and that is exactly. is more uh, possible and, and doable for anybody. Yes. We just have to have exactly. arrested eyes. We just have to have exactly. the heart that says, yes. God, help me to be fully present in this exactly. moment mm -hmm. and see this person and see. And it's exactly. just such a beautiful upside down kingdom way to live because I think right. so often we will go into a situation where, or into a room where yep. we feel all eyes on us, all eyes probably yep. are not on us, but we feel no, like, right, right. okay, yeah. How, what am I doing? An how, how is this affecting me? Like who, no yes, one's reaching yeah. out to me. I, I and yep. you just see every, you can so easily see everything and how it revolves around you. But if in that one shift of saying, God, I'm coming into this conversation, I'm coming into this room, I'm coming yes. into this moment, help me to see who you want me to, exactly. to bless and to speak exactly. life over. Exactly. Like today I was in a meeting with our creative team and we were talking about like wins and opportunities for a thing that we just had at church and just talking through all the things that went great and then all the things that we can do better. And I had my phone facing up and Earl texted me and we have this code when we need each other. We just write test. And that's our way of no, like saying to the other person, like, I need you to look at your phone right now. Are you available? That's awesome. And so he wrote test. And so I missed his first test and then he wrote test again. And so then I was like, oh, I have two tests. And so then that's even though awesome. I was in the meeting, yeah. So I was in this meeting, but then I saw test test. So then I was like, okay. So I just wrote him and said, hey, baby, you good? I'm in a creative meeting. And he's like, I need to run something by you because he's about to go speak. And so I stepped out of that meeting because it's rare that he's like, I need something like yeah. in this because I told him that I was in the meeting. But for him to say like, I need something, I was like, okay, wife, I, you know, it's not, I wasn't born yesterday. Yep. I'm locking in. Yep. So I said, y'all keep meeting without me. So I stepped away from the meeting. And then he was, he felt like his sermon was shifting and he wanted to, he was like, I wish you were here with me. Cause if you're here with me, you, I could like flesh this out with you. Wow. But I'm about to go speak and I need to like process, like merging these two messages that are coming to me at the same time. So then in that moment, I stopped thinking about the creative team. I stopped thinking about my to-do list. Mm. And in that moment, I was like, I want to help you birth this sermon. Cause I could tell he was like in sermon labor. Yeah. Cause I know you know yes. all about. Hello. And so the, so I told them to keep going. So I was able to be in that moment with my husband and lean into him. And then I went back to the meeting and said, y'all just pick me up on where we left off. And so I think just that, like, it's like a balancing act. Yeah. But I also, when I was with him, wasn't like, oh my gosh, what's happening in the meeting? I bet you something's flying through the cracks because I'm not in there. I just let that meeting 
meet. Yep. And because the priority in that moment, in that moment was exactly was Earl. Your husband. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Yep. 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 That's life changing. So and that, I knew the double test mm-hmm. meant like okay. Yeah, yes. Test, this is yep. test us. Mm-hmm. No, I yep. love that. Yep. That's yep. so such a yep. practical thing for for yep. couples. But um, that's beautiful, and that's just I think where God wants us to live because I think it is so exactly. easy for us to to be worrying about where we're not. And I think sometimes even as that, women, like it's yep. it's hard because we do we do carry a lot. We carry a lot exactly. as a wife. We carry a lot as a exactly. mom. We carry a lot. Exactly. And like you said earlier, for single moms who are just carrying even that extra load exactly. um, that a, a man isn't carrying in, the, in their life. Exactly. It, it sure, sure, sure. But I just yeah. think that, um, that this could really um, shift things for us if we could just be in the moment, trusting God, present, um, present yeah. asking God to help us to taste and see in this moment. Like, yes, and, that, I, and I think that yep. that is, um, that's where God wants us to live in this life of, of faith in him that, okay, exactly. yes. in this moment right now, I'm going to focus in on what you're calling me to focus in on God, exactly. because I cannot exactly. be worrying what is, what's my kid doing over here? Exactly. What's this exactly. happening over here? Like, I, I can't do that. So Lord, nope. help me to focus in right now in this moment and to be all in and to allow you to be God in all these other areas and hats that I'm yep. wearing and all these other things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll actually receive something in this too, because I'm, exactly. I'm being who you called me to be in this moment to focus in on, on this person. And I think exactly. that that's exactly where God wants us to be and not to, so right. to worry about all these other exactly. things. Exactly. And to, like you said, to be who he's called us to be, yeah. not to feel like we have to be someone else. It's so fun getting to like see what everyone's doing and what they're up to. Yes. But like it can also be tricky because sometimes then you see someone else's journey and you think that's who you're supposed to be when really God created us to be us, not them. Yes. And I get, I love like mentoring like new moms who are just like, you know, figuring things out, like freshly home from the hospital and just wrapping their brain around all the things. And I just love reminding new moms that you don't have to do it the way that so and so did it. Yes. Because what they showed you on their Instagram feed isn't really what happened, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know, I was in a text combo with them. Right, like, all those right. photos that just look so amazing. Like, you just see the real story. Um, so you just run your lane in your race, as Chris Kane says, yes. because I think we get so distracted and discouraged when we try to do what someone else is doing instead of what God's called us to do, which is being present in this moment, not in our own moment, not in someone else's moment. Yes. Oh, Anika, yeah. that's so good. Well, I want to respect your time. And we know we we're moving on to the next things that we need to focus yeah. in on. Right, right, um, right. But I just want to thank you. And um, I was also thinking maybe if you wanted to end um, just praying for those listening today um, who might, yeah. I mean, maybe they're struggling in this, maybe they're not, but right. um uh, but before we do, I just want to uh, let our listeners know that um, that they can find you and your husband, Earl, Pastor Earl, Pastor Anika, you guys lead Shoreline City Church. Yes. Um, and to, f- to follow them, you guys have probably um, all the Instagram and all the things, yeah. but just mm-hmm. to be uh, following you guys is to be following uh someone who's just leading the legacy and le- leading the way. So um, anyone who's listening who de- who needs to follow them, you do need to. Um, and I-, I just would love for you, Anika, to to pray for those listening I'd today. Love to. Thank I you. would love to. Love you so much. Father God, we just thank you so much for this time that we've had together. And we thank you for every single person who's listening, who's a part of this conversation with us. And we just ask that you would comfort them, that you would strengthen them, mm. that you would lead them, that you would guide them, that you would go before them, that you would fight battles on our behalf, that you'd renew our minds and give us the mind of Christ. We pray that if there's anyone who they're like, are 
the story that they tell themselves is that they're not worthy, that they don't have the ability to see someone because no one sees them. We just ask that you'd remind them even right now that you see them, that you Mm, love them, that you care for them, that you know every single hair on their head, that you have a plan and purpose for their life, that their future is in your hands, that you have not forgotten about them. And as they see others, you are seeing them. We ask, Lord, that you would just prompt us all in the moments, in the mundane and in the magic to love, to be kind, Mm. to wash the feet of other people, We think that as we decrease, that you would increase within us. We ask that you would strengthen us, that you'd encourage us, that you would go before us. We speak a blessing over every single person that's a part of this conversation. Mm. In Jesus' name, name. amen. 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 Onika, I love you. Thank you for, um, I was just thinking, you are uh, such a beautiful aroma, the fragrance of Christ. Mm. And I just... Um, I want to be more like you, and I'm just mm. so grateful for your impact in my life and for all of mm. us, all all listening and our family and our church. We j- I just love you. Thank you for being here with us today. Love you. So grateful for your friendship and so honored to be on this journey, like journey of a lifetime. Woo. Love you. Love you. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to swing by levilusco.com and jennylusco.com to see what's going on in our world. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And in the meantime, we would love to connect with you on social media. Jenny Jenny and Levi Levi Lusco, Lusco, out. out. Access more 